Hey there, everybody. It's me, Kaylee. You know me. Um, I am tuning you guys all right back into Number One Leading Ladies, a podcast uh, by women for women. And we focus on uh, not tearing each other down, but instead building each other up. So thank you guys for tuning back in again this week. This week, we have a special guest with us, um, Miss Dawn. And I'm going to let her introduce herself because I can't do it justice. Uh, Dawn, go ahead. Hi, uh, I'm Dawn. And I'm obviously, um, my last name is Way. I work with uh, CityGate Property Group. I'm actually one of the owners um, and partners, principals, and we've been in business for uh, going on six years. Uh, it's been an exciting, wild ride. I've been in, my, in this industry all my life. I started off as a, in nursing school, going to um, be an RN, and found myself working part-time to fund my vision for nursing school uh, as a receptionist in a property management company. and. Uh, go figure. I mean, all these years later, this is what I'm doing, and I absolutely love it and haven't regretted my career one time in my life. That's awesome. Thank you for introducing yourself. I appreciate it. Um, so I'm glad uh, that you have been in it for a while, and I'm really glad to see, too, that you've come from, like, the very bo uh, bottom or ground all the way up. So seeing kind of from everybody's perspective all the way is awesome, uh, so you can relate to everybody. Because uh, that was, you know, some frustration I've run into in the past where I worked for an organization that had lots of levels of different people. And, you know, we'd have, you know, I was in sales. And we'd have people come in that would manage us and they'd never done it in their life. So, you know, I'm like, you have no idea, man. We need to be out there talking to doctors, not sitting in the office meetings all Friday, you know. Anyway, I digress. So, um, so the first question that we always ask our interviewees on my podcast is just one one awesome thing that I think helps open up listeners' um, eyes and ears to the fact that, you know, an entrepreneur, someone that owns their own business, a lot of people, I think, think, oh, well, you probably make a lot of money and you have um, freedom of time and you can do whatever you want with your schedule. And it's this like really pretty thing. In reality, it's not. Um, so when you were starting your business and until now, kind of what were some of the challenges that uh, you faced getting it up and running? And then how did you overcome those? Well, you know, I had an opportunity that was pitched at me and it wasn't on my five or 10 year plan. I was working for a company called Night Best. They owned their own assets and they had a third party, which was a spinoff as a result of them selling assets. So they would, you know, people would ask them, investors would say, hey, will you just keep managing it? So they did that and they built up probably, you know, 12 to 15 assets that they were doing and they found very quickly that third party management is not as fun as owner managed, right? Because you're dealing with a lot of different personalities and you're, you're having to listen to that client and what they want rather than just making all the rules, right? So um, I was their VP of operations. I had left a company that I had been with for five years to join them. I never anticipated that they were going to either disband or sell off, off the third party. And I found myself six months later after leaving a company that I was very happy with um, to being offered a position with them to uh, then be asked if I wanted to purchase the properties, I mean, purchase the uh, management portion of it and start my own management company. So through my life, I had always said, I'm going to have my own management company someday, but it was really going to be on a smaller scale. It was going to cater to smaller assets. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would be here in my life. So some of the challenges I faced was number one, I had to get over the shock of what I had decided that I was going to jump off the cliff and do, which was third party management and started off very small. We had 1200 units. We actually peered back from that um, and ended up with, I think it was 850. And then from that moment on, just started to gain steam and never looked back. And so now we have 17,000, over 17,000 units, about 85 to 90 properties that make that count. But some of the challenges were just like trying to catch the vision. And I had always been an entrepreneur, I had another company um, called Morning Glory Services that um, worked on something totally different. But really that um, whole excitement of I'm gonna have my own business really wasn't there from the very beginning. It was more fright. Um, that's what I experienced was the fright. <laughs> How did you overcome that? Just kept walking one day at a time. Uh, 
you know, and, and I really felt like I needed to know things from the ground up, even in that business. So there's not anything, even though as big as we are now, we employ 450 employees, there's probably not one job that I couldn't jump in. Uh, it might take me a little bit, to a minute to catch up to speed with it, but I'd really be able to get it accomplished because I've touched and felt everything. I know how to set up the bank accounts. I know how to, you know, do asset management fees. I know how to do, you know, put a financial together. So there's a lot that goes into a property management company that people don't even realize. Yeah. And I think you touched on a few things that as I grow my companies and I'm trying to pull in things from entrepreneurs who are at a much higher level than I am, because for me, um, our, capital business for apartments is not, um, it's not just doing deals. It's not just one here, one there, whatever. For me, I wanted to build an infrastructure and a company and have a mission, vision, values, have a why, um, make it very clear to everybody that's involved and not just, you know, partner with whoever, you know, it was very important that our why yes. aligns with our other partnerships. So in the beginning, it was kind of like, whoever are good people, that's good, but it's, you know, I, I want to make this a career. It's it's got to be more. So you had touched a little bit on um, vision, and it's really important to to know that. Um, and then I think that whenever uh, one thing that really impressed me about uh, you and why I wanted you on here as a role model is because it took me a while and a lot of reading because I didn't I don't have a business degree. I have a nutrition degree, um, and the degree doesn't matter. But um, what I'm really good at uh, is not necessarily like scaling the business, and I didn't understand that part of it. So if you want something that you can replicate and grow, you have to be able to have systems and processes. Um, and I noticed very early on in our communication that it seemed everything that you did was very professional, uh, very, um, you, had a, you had a process for everything. And so that was good to see, you know, like, well, if we're going to do it this way, we're going to do this. And we are not going to do that, you know, knowing what your work principles are. And anyway, so I just want to give you some kudos, but anyone that's listening, um, that that is something that for someone like me who doesn't have an entrepreneurial background, that's, that's hard to learn, but it's like an absolute must. And so kind of when you work with someone and you see that, that's a good sign. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thanks, Kaylee. You know, I mean, you have to begin with the end in mind, right? Um, and so that's what we did from the very beginning. And we had, you know, marketing and training when we had 1,200 units because we felt that it was necessary to have marketing and training. Now, albeit that was one person at the time, right, that wore both hats. And probably in the very beginning, you know, when you have, you know, eight people in the corporate office, that that's what really makes up your core everybody's wearing, you know, multiple hats. And as we've grown, now we have a, now we have a department, right? That's a marketing department, but we still called it a department back then, even though it was one person. But now we have five people that handle the marketing and two people that handle the training. And then we actually cross train and cross pollinate in between people. And so our res support people, even though they're not necessarily trainers, they're ex experts at what they do. So we utilize them to go ahead and do training as well. So not one person is just doing all of the training. So That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Those, those challenges. And then like, you know, the challenge of, um, what did you say? You kept marching on one day at a time. You know, when you see those challenges, I think that that should resonate for everybody listening because right now it's uh, the end-ish of um, April and we're in quarantine or tyranny as I call it. Um, so we're being uh, kept at home and we can't go anywhere. And so a lot of this for me has been a realization of it's unknown, it's scary. And the only way that we're going to move forward is accepting that and then taking it one day at a time. Literally, we don't know what's going to change next week, tomorrow, whatever. But, you know, that's, yeah. So that's one thing that I think stops a lot of entrepreneurs from even trying to become an entrepreneur in the first place is just that fear of having to deal with the unknown and and that, that will never change, to tell you the truth, right? So That's the truth. It's, it's not all pretty and sparkly and whatever, but if you're willing to, um, willing to take challenges on and accept that you don't always know the answer, but learn and uh, keep pressing forward, I mean, you may fail, but whatever. Guess what? You'll learn it and do, do double what you did. So um, anyway, so just that's the reality, right, of uh, being an entrepreneur. Um, the other question that I always like to ask our um, guests on the podcast is what, um, well, here I'll swap them. Actually, what, what's been your biggest lesson? 
Wow, um, that's a good question. Um, my biggest lesson has been that I, I'm not perfect. Um, I am going to make mistakes. And the biggest thing is to hit them head on, that when I know I've done something that might cause a problem, I need to address it right there and then. And so I always, especially if I'm dealing, so I'll bring it into the real world. If, if something has happened and it's not necessarily something I've done, it's something somebody else forgot, and then I have to confront um, or have communication with the client, that's better sooner rather than later. I don't let anxiousness build up inside of me and like let my stomach grind. I just like look at it from very, I, I remove my emotion which is really hard, especially if you're a woman, remove the emotion and just deal with it. Okay, this is a business. And there's nothing new under the sun. There's an answer for anything and everything. You just have to find out what that answer is and have a viable solution. And I found that through my career, when I'm just honest with people and I tell them the truth and I'm sincere, um, it, it goes a lot better. Even though it's something that somebody might be upset with or angry, it's better to just get it out of the way right away. Yeah. And what do you think is the biggest reason why people don't do that? Fear. It's the fear of, you know, being rejected, fear of being yelled at, fear. It's always rooted to me in, in fear. But the best thing is, is that one day at a time, moving it forward. Um, just, I heard someone say one time, uh, you know, she's a spiritual mom to me. She doesn't know it because I don't know her. But Joyce Myers, I remember her saying one time, if you're afraid, do it afraid. Right. If you think somebody's upset with you, ask them, are you upset with me? Um, and, you know, and, and put to rest those kinds of thoughts. Right. So you can move on. That seems so simple, but that's so true. <laughs> Just ask, are you upset with me? OK. I love that. OK, cool. Yeah, because. Yeah, I think the fear is, is like a lot of people. I've got some partners that like they, they fear being blown up on um, like you know, someone like Medusa coming at him, you know, and I'm like, no, I just, here's, here's, here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm seeing. Here's what I'm hearing. Here's what, da, da, da. and, uh, you know, I want to share that with you guys and what are we going to do about it? You know? Um, and as long as we come up with something, then it's, <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> you know? Right. You know, uh, and I mean, I, I never have to think about if something's unethical, immoral, um, you know, or illegal, because I wouldn't go down that path. So I always know that when I'm coming in at a situation, I'm coming at it with like the best resources that I have. And I may not necessarily have the answer, but other people do. And I'm not afraid to humble myself and say, um, you know, hey, I don't have this answer, but let's, let's work it out together. Yeah, that's some good, uh, good lessons. Now, um, I guess my last question, I'll probably have a few more, but, um, but we usually ask every time, um, is what has been your biggest win? Okay, there's a, I think it's a success of wins, right? Um, the biggest win has been that I took the jump um, and I did it afraid and I didn't look back. It, it was never really in my mind that something would fail. It was like, what's going to happen when it succeeds and it gets this big and I'm, you know, I'm out of my resources, but that's when you, that's when you partner up. That's when you yoke yourself to somebody else that's smarter than you, <laughs> sometimes brighter than you, but you have a yin and yang. Um, my business partner that I, I do have is amazing. His name's Pat Smith. And he, he had a level of education and expertise that was different than mine. But when you, when you yoke them together, they come out well. And so as the years have gone by in CityGate, we have hired the best and the brightest. And I mean, we just scored with a, an amazing CFO. We have a controller now. Um, just our back office is amazing. And so those are the biggest wins is surrounding myself with people that are smarter, know something that I don't know, and that we all, the missing pieces come together as a puzzle and it gets, it gets put together pretty well. Now, how do you feel or have you ever felt whenever you go into that situation? Um, I, well, I don't struggle with this, but some people do as far as um, when you partner with somebody who knows a whole lot more than you and, um, well, first of all, someone that, I don't know how you say it, but they just, they know more than you. They have more experience. Let's just say that. 
uh, or they have different experience that's valuable. Um, and uh, they have different experience that's valuable. Um, how do you not feel or do you feel um, inferior or how, how does how do you feel in that situation? And how do you feel sure, you know, it took me a little bit. I mean, I came from being, you know, a regional to a VP and then owning a company that is like very big. Um, and so that's that can be intimidating. Uh, but every step of the way, I had faith, number one, um, and I kept walking in that. But it took me a little bit to fit into my role. I didn't, you know, I wasn't born being a president of a company, so I had to learn. And, and so it's, if, as long as you have open communication, relationship, and you're willing to hit the situations, you know, head on. So there were times that, you know, I felt very intimidated by the things that Pat knew, but I can guarantee you that if you were to ask him, he'd say, I felt intimidated by some of the things Dawn knew because I'm relationship driven. I can, you know, find the common ground and, and it's genuine and it's so not everybody has that gift either. So I think I overcame that by understanding who I was as a person and what, I, what value I had to bring to the plate. Good. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, well, so I think all of us probably struggle with this, but, um, for me, I don't have a pride issue when it comes to that. Cause sometimes people, you know, they, uh, they don't want to work with people that know more than them because then I feel like it uncovers some inadequacy in their head and that's like a pride thing and they don't want to go there. Um, but you know, when it comes to like, it's like you said, the, just like the complete opposite, like being, being open-minded and listening and, and being able to take it as a learning experience. I think that, um, that self-confidence, that's the other part of it too, is the self-confidence that you either don't have built yet. I struggle with that part. Like that's, that's my deal is that there's always like that little guy in your head that's like, you know, you're too young or you don't know enough or you don't have enough experience or whatever, um, which is also BS, but that's why you have your other person, you know, that, that knows what you don't know. So Anyway, I just think a lot of people struggle with um, becoming an entrepreneur because of what we talked about. And then um, I'm glad that you shared with us um, some biggest lessons that you had because like that helps solve some of those problems. And then when we get to the biggest wins, you know, you have to get past those things to get to, to big wins like you have. So um, yeah, this has been awesome. Um, let me see. We have, we have a couple minutes left. I'm happy about that because um, there's so much I want to ask you, but um I know this isn't like, you know, Q&A time for me. It's really more about learning your story. Um, so when it came to, I guess, trial and error, and when it came to, so now I'm going to kind of ask about specifically what you do. Um, so when it came to um, learning and changing and creating an organization and a flow and all this stuff, what do you find are best practices in property management? Um, so like for me, I could tell you, here's what we do in due diligence and who's responsible for what, here's how we underwrite a deal. Here's who's responsible for what, like I could break all that down in your organization. What, what works? So it, it I guess it really sometimes depends on what I'm looking at and trying to identify. But when it, if I bring it down to like looking at a property and looking at um, you know, what makes it tick, it comes down to for me, four points and you may have heard it in the industry. It's, price, product, people, and promotion, and not necessarily in that order, but you have to have the right people. Um, and that transcends any business um, on any level that if you don't have the right people doing the right thing, it's, you're, it's a battle uphill. So having the right people in place that have the right attitude, that have the right heart, that have the same, you, they don't have to be the same as me because I think sometimes our greatness is found in the ability for us to widely work with people that are diverse from us. Um, that opens up the field. If I can only work with people that are in my lane, then that's all the business I'm going to have. But if I can like learn to broaden my horizons and work with every type of personality, um, I might not run with those people after work at five o'clock, but I can work with them during the day because we have a common mission and a, and a common ground. You know, the price, the promotion and the product, um, you know, are specific to a property, um, making sure you have the right product. But again, that can transcend whether you're looking at an apartment or whether you're looking at, you know, the marketing for your own company, 
what's your product? You know, does it look nice? Is does it have you know curb appeal when somebody goes to the website? There's a lot of things that I think transcend that I've learned in the industry that go that can be brought anywhere. Uh, so uh, hopefully I answered that question. Yeah, well, it seems like one of the biggest themes, and doesn't matter in any business model, it sounds like, is, is the people. You know what I mean? Um, I've learned, especially, or been reinforced during our quarantine time, that uh, we really only have each other at the end of the day. You know what I mean? So if you can't lean on other people, I mean, you could sit there and uh, normally when things are functioning normally, uh, or how they had been, um, we could have our certain pattern of the way that we do things, the way that we text people, the way that we, um, you know, order from Amazon automatically, the way that we did stuff, you know, but at the end of the day, when all that breaks down, what's left is people. And when it comes to having opportunities or getting where you want to get, you can't get something without going through another person first. So, uh, when it comes to selecting the right people for supporting you, how do you go about doing that? What's your process? So, you know, again, it's, I, I, it's one of those core values. It's relationship. Uh, we have people that want to work with our company because they know, they know who we are and they know our heart, they know our mind, they know what our philosophy is. But I always look for people that have that energy, that have that X factor, that are really passionate about what they do. I might not be passionate about accounting and numbers, although I kind of am, but I, but I may not be. I need to find the person that is passionate about that and that they want to get up every single morning. Life's too miserable to spend it, uh, to spend, life's too short to spend it miserable. And so you have to have a reason to get up in the morning and be excited about what you're doing or else, you know, life's a void. And it's nothing changes until you change it. So I look for the people that have that X factor in them that they don't need to always positively be, you know, uplifted, that they can generate that from within themselves. Very good point. Very good point. Oh my God. Yeah, that's true. Because um, I would say for me as a business owner, that's one of my largest challenges always has been probably always will be but as a as a woman we have an advantage i think um that we have intuition and so whenever we're meeting with people and honestly regardless of if it's in person or even on zoom you can kind of feel that person's energy and you, you kind of know you know what i mean so learning how to listen to my intuition has been a big a big um accomplishment for me um but you know so that's always been a challenge is like I'm also very data driven because it's comfortable and it's controllable and it's something I can lean on. And I read a lot of books, you know, and people are mm -hmm. mysterious and unknown and their emotions can fly off the handle at any time. And so it's unpredictable. Uh, but I've learned um, that in putting some data and my guts or my um, intuition together is, is a really good uh, combination. And for me too, I grew up listening to a lot of words, you know, that we're going to do this, you're going to have this, da, da, da. And, and didn't materialize, or it did sometimes. But so um, now I've learned to listen to actions. And what I do is I kind of um, give someone an opportunity and then I kind of just like sit back. And then I see what they do, you know? Um, That's if good. you're self-motivated, if they have passion for that, uh, it'll be really apparent, I think. So, and then again, being kind of open-minded, like, well, I'll give you this and it doesn't work out, doesn't work out, or you'll come back or whatever, you know? Uh, deadlines to me are very important. So, I mean, when somebody has a cavalier attitude about a deadline, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard for me, but we all have to deal with like negative people. It just happens in our family, in our business, in life in general. And so I've learned to, okay, why is what this person is saying to me, though it's negative, why is it affecting me? Why is it bothering me? So I try to take the nugget even though the per person may be a little bit irritating at the time to me, what is, what is it that's irritating me? Is it something that I feel like I'm inadequate at? And so what they're saying is, you know, like really bothering me. Um, so even then an irritating person then turns into a tool. So. Correct, correct, correct. If you have that attitude, that's amazing. Like somebody else I've realized they said something or they, the way they behave or whatever, um, long story short, end up figuring out, okay, well, what is the core issue here? Because usually it's like here, you know what I mean? And 
I'm like, oh, so that behavior, it's not bad or negative or anything. It's just, it's a trigger for me because yes. it reminds me of if I ever behave like that, that shows weakness. And in my past and even now, uh, my fear is to show weakness so that I get taken advantage of like I had before. And I don't want that. So them being so lighthearted and giddy and unprofessional and whatever triggers me, but it has nothing to do with they're doing anything wrong. It's anyway. Yeah. So, so it became a tool to teach myself a lesson. Um, to, and again, I'm digging deeper into that this week to understand that interaction a little bit better, but, uh, yeah, people are, <laughs> people are complicated, but, uh, but I mean, if you just, um, I have a lot of love to give, you know? Um, and so I have the right, um, intentions, you know, with everything. And so I think if your intentions are good, then, you know, working with people is, is not going to be that big, big of a deal to figure out, you know? Um, okay. So we kind of covered that. I had one more question. Uh, what was it? Cause we're like almost at a time. Um, oh, uh, so you can say whatever you want. I don't know how to ask this question, honestly. Uh, but I've read a lot of different books about property management companies, about, uh, owning your own property management company as an owner, um, advice from other people, lots of things, you know, and it's all different to tell you the truth. Uh, and plus the you know, personal experiences, um, it's all different. So, um, one thing that we always try to do, whether it's hiring a new employee, whether it's working with a new partner, kind of a little bit different, but, um, is, is kind of having like an initial interview, you know, of what you kind of want to know to set yourself up for success. And when it comes to uh, talking to a property management company, what kind of um, interview questions do you think are like the most important to, to ask or to know? Well, from the reverse side of the table, the things that I want to know is like, what are, what's an investor's goals, right? I can't, even start to begin um, to form a plan unless I know your goals. So I think the important thing for uh, an owner or a client to know is like, Don, what's your goals? Like, where do you plan on being? You know, what what kind of property management company do you, um, you know, are you? Those kinds of questions that give the foundation because no relationships built without trust. And so my I would want to know, can we trust each other? That's really a big important key factor because you're going to have to trust me um, in a situation because I'm handling your multi-million dollar baby. Um, and so you, there has to be a, a level of trust. And so I, that's what I look for when I'm interviewing a client as well because it goes both ways. And there's sometimes where partners, like they can't, it doesn't sync up, philosophies are different. and so I'll ask those key questions. And I think the key questions that um, a, an investor should ask is, you know, what are your best practices? What do you do? And I've had, I mean, I've had so many interviews with investors wanting to come on board with us that um, it needs to be reciprocal. It needs to be trusting and it needs to be based on a relationship. And we, there needs to be a goal a, a plan that's laid out and, Truth and transparency um, is one of the biggest things. And we are big around here on transparency. If we know it, I want the client to know it. Not until we can solve it, you know, but it's, it, it happens, we know it, we solve it, we present the solution. It's never like, it doesn't drag on for weeks and you shouldn't be surprised by anything that comes your way um, from us if, we've been communicating right along. Like, you know, ne we're never going to replace that. You know, I'll bring it to real life. We're never going to replace your boiler and you're going to find out about it on your financials. You're going to hear about it the day that the boiler goes down. We're going to share those things with you. And then we're going to work on it together on how we plan on solving it. That's great. Yeah. Um, how often do you feel is communication necessary um, between an owner and a property manager? It really varies, Kaylee. Um, it depends on the asset. You know, when we first take over an asset, our expectations are we need to be in more communication than normal. Um, and I, I think after though you've established it and things are going in the right way and there's that trust level that's already been built, it needs to back off just a little because I can sit on a call and get ready for a, re for a meeting, like a Zoom meeting for a report um, that you can already pull from 
the um, from you know your software system and I can talk about it and prepare for it and that's what ends up happening for regionals they prepare like for two or three hours for a meeting that it's only talking about regurgitating the information that already comes from a report and then it takes them off of the main task of doing the main thing which is being on site walking vacant apartments walking the property collaborating with the team you know finding out what the needs are from that level and so i always say i'd rather be doing than talking agreed agreed um and then when things are going in the not right direction how often do you think a call or i don't know facetime or, or whatever is appropriate i'm an open book so i tell our clients because the, the bank has one idea the owner has one idea the person who's in it has another idea like what? yeah I, I think it's what for me it's the answer to that is however long it takes to get you comfortable with the situation that you know it's being addressed so I, I don't, um, I always uh, tell our clients, we're here, we exist to make you money, solve your problems, um, and let you sleep while we can't. So um, to that degree, I, I just feel like whatever it's going to take to make you comfortable, that you know that it's being, that you can sleep, that you know you're going to make money, and that the situation is going to be solved. So um, we should be accommodating in that way to make you, now if, if it gets to the point with, um, you know, somebody's just like nervous and they have no reason to be nervous, I don't have a problem with saying, hey, I think we need to, you know, let's, let's you know, have a little cool down period because this is all going great. You, you're doing fantastic. You know, you have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Too funny, cause like it's, I understand that you know what I mean? Um, and I'm never that person, never have been that person. I hate micromanaging. And I would, I actually even, sometimes even without enough trust, tell you the truth, I will just offload stuff and be like, go for it. You know, you're the, you're the expert. I trust you. Do it. Prove me wrong. You know what I mean? And until that point happens, then I'm like, okay, now I have to work, you know? Um, but you know, I definitely, I think I need to learn like a balance. Um, but yeah, usually I'll just be like, here, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, and until there's a problem, but I'm never, I'm like, if, if, if you look, if I'm looking at the reports and uh, which we get, you know, monthly and everything's fine, like business plans being executed, whatever, you know? Um, so anyway, yeah, that's, that's good. That's good uh, to hear that, um, that when someone, you know, has things working correctly and they can trust you, they can just put hands off um, and that you're, you're willing to help the client on the other end be comfortable. Cause I think it's the same thing. Nope. It's the same thing with us and our investors. Um, sometimes before they invest and sometimes while they're invested, some of them need um, more conversation than others. Some others don't want to be talked to some some need a little bit more communication to be comfortable. And I never let that annoy me or get, or I, or get mad about it because I'm like, if I put in the time right now that establishes trust and therefore we're going to have a long-term relationship. And so, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure everybody appreciates that. Well, um, I have now gone over a little bit. Uh, it, it's okay, but um, I've gotten a ton of value out of this today. And I hope that, you know, this relationship, we can continue this. You've been very patient with me over time. Uh, where I have been a little bit slower now to, to get to know and to, you know, talk a little bit and how about this? How about that? I um, appreciate that. Um, but for our audience that's listening out there, thank you guys so much today, uh, guys and gals for tuning in. Um, if you would like to get a hold of Miss Dawn, how can our audience get a hold of you? Sure. Um, my cell phone is always the best and I don't have a problem with putting that out there if you're okay with it. Um, my email address is dwaye at citygatepg.com. We have our website at citygatepropertygroup.com. Uh, my cell phone number is 214-223-6090. Now, if you have a million listeners, um, that might cause a problem. I'll probably be on the phone a whole lot, but um, I'm always available. You can just call the corporate office and um, you will find that both Pat and myself are very um, accommodating and available yes uh right now don't worry about it we have like 500 but but we're growing so 
Um, so again, thank you listeners for um, being here today with us and for um, being along our journey to help um, women to get out there more, to be stronger leaders um, and to be able to support each other. I will see you guys again next week on number one, Leading Ladies.